Thank you everybody for coming this evening. You've got a data pack that's been on your chair, which I'm not going to talk you through. So you can read that at your leisure afterwards, but everybody, everything I want to mention this evening is in here in data. We've spoken to over 2,000 micro-businesses across the EU since November last year, when most of us found out about the new digital VAT rules. We've done a quantitative research study and case studies, and we work with them daily, about 5,000 of them in social media. Thank you. So what I want to talk to you about tonight we're representing people from at least 18 of the EU member states. So although I'm British, I'm here on behalf of micro-businesses from across the EU. And I'd like your permission to take you on a journey. I'd like you to imagine that for some reason you felt inspired to create your own business. And it's got a digital product in it. Maybe you're a mother returning to work after maternity leave. Maybe you've got carer responsibilities and you need to juggle a business with your home life. Maybe you've suddenly had to look for a new job. Maybe the parliamentary election vote wasn't quite so favourable and you find yourself needing to find an emergency career. But you've had an idea for a digital product. It might be an MP3, it might be an e-book, it might be a training course, sharing your expertise and making a difference in the world. And then you discover how easy it is to sell. You need a simple website, PayPal buy now buttons, a means of delivering that product to your customer. It's really simple. You do your marketing, your product is excellent, you quickly grow your business so that you end up registering for VAT in your own country. And if you imagine for a moment, it's still 2014. You might only have one rate of VAT in your country that applies to your product. So when you do your VAT returns every quarter, it's a really simple job. Your customers love what you're doing. Then in November 2014, you wake up one morning and you read an article that talks about new EU VAT rules. And you think, well, OK, I'm VAT registered. I'm interested in this. But as you read the article, and it unfolds for you, you realise that it's no longer enough for you to know where you're based. You need to know where your customer is. And then you need to know which of the 81 rates of VAT in the European Union you need to apply to that sale. So suddenly, selling your brilliant idea that used to be so simple starts becoming a bit more complex. So you dive in and you look at it, and you're using some really simple system like PayPal buy now buttons. And you realize that your website doesn't even give you the customer's country. And as you carry on reading through this article, you realize that actually that wouldn't be enough even if it did, because you have to have at least two pieces of different information to prove where the customer is. And as a micro-business, you don't have that. Then you find out, even if you have those two pieces, you need a third piece if they disagree. So if the customer, for example, is using their French credit card on holiday in Italy, you need a third piece of data. And you know that your systems won't give you that. So you look at your options. Even if you could get that data, you need to work out which rate of VAT to apply to your sale. If you're only selling one kind of product, that's fine. There's probably 28 member state rates of VAT. But if you sell e-books and online courses, and the online course has a human element, you realize that that actually stays under the old rules. So that would have your national country's VAT rate, but the e-book has the customer's country VAT rate. So you have two different countries as a place of supply in one transaction. There is no way your website is going to handle that. So you look at what your options are. You look at, do I exclude EU sales? Which we have to say, a huge number of the businesses we've spoken to are doing that. It's their first reaction. 27% of the EU's micro-businesses have chosen to block other countries from buying digital downloads from their websites. 27%. So we're talking about digital single market. 27%, their first reaction was, I cannot comply with this law. I want to. I cannot. So I cannot anymore sell outside of my country in Europe. They can still sell to the States. They can still sell to New Zealand, but they cannot sell to the EU. You look at your other options again. And you realize the costs are actually really high. 
you could get yourself a shopping cart that would give you this data, but the programming costs are upwards of 5,000 euros. And you don't have that kind of money spare because you're a very small business. You look at the ongoing costs, and some of the compliance costs we've been seeing so far in the first three months are over a hundred times the amount of European VAT that's been collected. So a business might have collected 50 euros. The cost of compliance for them is enormous. You're having to pay per transaction fees to keep trading. So another option, you might think, well, okay, I'll stop selling via my website. I'll go and find a third-party platform that can do this for me. Then you realize there are consequences to that too. You lose between 30 and 70% of your revenue in commission. You also lose one of the most valuable things to a business. You lose the ability to connect with your customer because the platform knows who the customer is, not you. So you can no longer send them newsletters. You can no longer send them promotions. It becomes something completely detached from your business. You have no relationship with that customer anymore. And in the case of many of these platforms, they dictate which countries you can sell to. They dictate what your pricing needs to be. So your beautiful business that you grew from scratch, you're effectively handing over to another platform in order to keep trading. You keep reading this article and you hear about a mini one-stop shop, which the article says, don't worry, that's great. You don't need to register for VAT in any of the member states. Just register for this one shop. And you're really, really heartened that that was brought in because that will really, really help if you can get the data to feed in to the mini one-stop shop. But to use the mini one-stop shop, you need to know where your customer is. And you need to work out for every single ebook that you sell, which rate of VAT to apply. You know that your systems won't do that for you. To do that manually with an Excel spreadsheet might take you up to five minutes per customer. For a 99 cent download, five minutes for every single customer to work out the data to put into the MOS system. You know you can't do it. Then you realize that most people have never even heard of this legislation. You go to a networking dinner. You're stressed. It's shortly before Christmas. You've hardly thought about anything else about how do I comply with this legislation. Nobody else in the room has heard about it. And this means that they're continually, continuing the way they used to, blissfully unaware, at a massive competitive advantage to you because they're not stressed. They're not trying to comply with the legislation. And so you suddenly realize there's now a two-tier business system within Europe. So this piece of legislation that really clearly had incredibly positive intentions, you read further down in the article that nobody realized it would hit you. It was decided back in 2008 that micro-businesses wouldn't be affected because they either didn't sell internationally, unfortunately there are no walls within the internet, or you only sold through platforms. It was assumed that none of us sold direct through our websites. So the impact assessment wasn't done by your government, or the impact assessment was done but they didn't understand how complicated it is. If you compare Selling something, knowing the one VAT rate for your country and doing a VAT return, with selling it, having to have two to three bits of data that you compare during the transaction and working out which of the 81 VAT rates to apply, you're suddenly climbing Everest in order to keep trading. And so you're left with three choices. You either go the platform route, meaning you lose at least half of your revenue and your customers never connect with you, so the likelihood of trading them up to your other services disappears. Or you break the law and you carry on doing what you've always done and hope that you're small enough that nobody will catch you. Or you close your cherished business. The option that we in EU VAT Action chose, and we're just a group of entrepreneurs, was actually the fourth action which was to talk about this and to be constructive and to help people understand that the unintended consequences of this legislation are hugely damaging. We know that the member states never intended these consequences. We know that had you understood the thresholds that were originally discussed 
would most likely have been introduced. And we know that by working with you and helping you understand this is an EU-wide problem for micro-businesses. To be fair, even some of the big businesses have struggled with this. By working together, we can make a difference. So I'm here tonight to implore those of you who have the ability to make a difference on this to stand up, to take action, and to help micro-businesses be a flourishing part of the digital single market. Thank you.